For this problem, instead of just working with the picture, they now actually give us an actual equation that we can use to be a little bit more accurate so we don't have to estimate heights off of the picture itself. So this picture has been provided for us. Here's our function, square root of x plus 2. We're working only between 0 and 2, but it's telling us we have to use 8 subintervals. So a picture has been drawn for us that already shows the eight different rectangles that we're going to be using. And in fact, it's actually giving us a drawing of the upper and lower sums all at the same time here. So we can see all those drawn in there. So this time, because we're using eight rectangles, we should get a little bit more accurate area. And the space is a little bit smaller between these. So that means that when I get my lower and upper sums, those two numbers are probably going to be closer to each other because I have more rectangles than I'm using. If you only use uh, four rectangles, there'd be a lot more space and the range would be a lot more in between those two lower sum and the upper sum areas, but now we're probably gonna get something that's fairly close with this. So, in order to know what the exact heights are gonna be, we're gonna look at the picture and that's gonna tell us what X value we wanna look at in order to get the height. Now. It's better to make a table for this before we start going into upper and lower sums. We're just going to make a table for the whole thing. So I want to make an X and a Y table uh, for this. And I'm going to be using values off of here. So this is, we're going to be doing zero. And then each of the X values that we have going across here, well, we have between zero and two. And if I take two and divide it by eight, that means that the width of each of these rectangles is going to be 0.25 because you get 2 divided by 8, so 0.25 here, which means I have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I have nine different x values here, so now I know how big to make my table. So I need to have nine spaces here 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So there's my nine different spaces that I'm going to have uh, for the x values. I'm starting with 0, and I'm just adding 0.25 all the way across. So I'm going to do 0.25 here, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 1, 1.25, 1.5, 1.75, .5, and 2. Okay, so that would be all of my x values that I would, I would have here, reading, reading it off the graph down there. Now, to get the y values, you probably want to use a calculator. You can put this in as y1 and you can just generate all these y values down below. I have these written down already, so let's go ahead and put those in. 2, 2 2.5, 2.71, 2.87, 3, 3.12, 3.22, 3.32, and then finally 3.41. So this is what you would get from your uh, calculator it would spit you out all these different values. Okay, so it's better to have this done first because now we can just look at the picture and see what height corresponds to the value off of our uh, table here. Let's do lower sum. Okay, so for lower sum, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the picture and the picture is going to tell us what height that we're going to grab off the table. Now the very first one, that has a height of 2 and it's going to have a width of, this time we're using 0.25 as our width. The, the next one this rectangle that goes inside here, now its height is going to be determined at 0.25. So I look at 0.25 and I see that there's a 2.5 there. The y value is the height that you're going to use for each of these rectangles. So I'm going to do 2.5 and that's 0.25. And then next, uh, the next one, next one over, that, that uh, is going to be, that height's determined at, right here, at 0.5, so I'm going to do 2.71 times 0.25. And then basically you're just going to keep on going all the way across here. Now the very last one, the very last height is going to be determined at 1.75. So I'm not going to use the last one here. So all I need to do is just keep on going and just write down the rest of the values off the table here. So 2.71 I just used. Now I'm going to use 2.87 times 0.25. And then I have plus one uh, times 0.25, or three rather, three is your y value, times 0.25, 3.12 times 0.25, 3.22, and then finally I have 3.32 times 
25. So I have all those. Notice in the last, the, the last one I'm not using because the height of the last rectangle, as you can see here, is determined by this x value right there at 1.75. So if I take all this and I combine all that together, 5.67 I get for uh, the first one. Now I want to do upper sum. Here's something to make that easier when you're writing all this out. Instead of writing everything all times 0.25, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 0.25 on the outside. Then I just need to put all the heights in here inside parentheses. It's going to make it easier uh, to calculate. Okay, so I'm going to do First of all, for, the, for that, the upper sums, I need to look at what x value is giving me the height of the first rectangle. And I see here that at 0.25, at the x value of 0.25, that's where my, the height of the first rectangle is going to be at. Okay, so at 0.25, I'm at 2.5. So I'm just going to put the heights in here only because I've already accounted for the 0.25 on the outside. Then next, I'm basically just going to be using all these other heights all the way down. And I notice the very last rectangle is using the height at 2. So therefore, all I'm going to do is just write all these numbers inside here. So 2 .5, 2.5, 2.71, 2.87, 3, 3.12, 3.22, 3.32, and then 3.41 I'm going to use here. So notice what I did there, 0.25 times all this on the inside. So if you multiply all that out uh, together, then you're going to get your answer is 6.04. Okay, so notice that these two areas are pretty close to each other, 5.67 and 6.04. So the more rectangles that you use, this window is actually going to shrink. And these will get closer and closer and closer to what the actual area is. So we know that the actual area is going to be somewhere between these two numbers, between 5.67 and 6.04.